to my right, in the blue lane, from Lacey, New Jersey, give it up for Ava Colasanti! And to my left, in the red lane, our top seed from New Brunswick, New Jersey. East Brunswick, New Jersey. Too many towns in New Jersey. Rachel DeGuts! The best in the biz, Greg Schwartz, counting them in for our incredibly excited audience that seems to be growing by the second. And Will, the key to this race for me is that Rachel is more rested, not only having watched an extra race, not only having done boardwalk, but Ava missed the close qualifier due to a non-COVID illness. She may or may not be 100%, and we're going to find out who is at their best in this final race, and it looks like Rachel has a it's also worth mentioning that Ava completed the Monstro climb, which is something that Rachel has not. Rachel getting that spin on the second wagon wheel. Looks like Ava is going to get to the rest bar first. We will see if Rachel is going to take a rest again. Or she's going to go straight forward again. She's going to take a rest. I think that's the smart strategy. They both got to the rest point at about the same time. Yeah, it's, uh, I think she's going to use the rest solely because she knows Ava can go deep into this course and you really cannot afford to fall early in this race. This is for the gold. We will crown a champion by the end of this race and both women really want it. Absolutely. I think both women are going for that buzzer at the end of the course. This is going to be their last run of the weekend and surely they both want that buzzer. I mean, do you blame them? Oh, not at all. Yeah. Even, you know what, I say even if your opponent falls early, you go for the buzzer, it's the last round. You don't have to worry about future races. Exactly. So, I believe they have a minute to rest. Or is it 45? I think it's 45. It is. Ava going for the lache. And you can see those boards do tip a little bit if you don't stay centered on them. Ava's staying centered and the board's not tipping at all. And this is what caught up Avery a moment ago. But both women moving through these rings. Ooh, very, very smooth, cool. very smooth indeed. Who's gonna get to that platform first? Looks like Rachel is in a slight lead. Who's gonna get the dismount though? And it's, it's Rachel. Rachel. And Avery. Ava. Ava, sorry, goes for the rooftop rumble first. Nikki, uh, Rachel, uh, is opting to rest before the rooftop rumble and presumably rest after the, the rooftop rumble as well. I think that's the strategy she's going for. Again, she knows that she's probably going to have to beat the monster climb, something she failed to do in the closed qualifier yesterday. So Ava opted for the distance advantage, at least for the time being, but will it pay off? I wonder if it even occurred to Ava that she could get rest on both platforms. Well, you know what? That might be uh, one of the disadvantages to not being able to compete in the uh, qualifier yesterday. Less time to strategize. Of course, Ava coming off of that illness. We don't know how much at 100% she is. And Rachel. Now Rachel going across. And now Ava's getting the ready to go. She wasn't in position. And she goes right at the perfect moment and Rachel using up some of her rest. Yep, this is exactly what we speculated. Rachel going for maximum rest time. And we'll see if it pays off as Ava extends her lead as she heads into the girder. She's gonna go one-sided. That's what she did in that match against Avery. And now she's on to the rest bar. Rachel's starting to eye up these two obstacles. The sun is blazing, and so we're gonna see if that plays into advantages because Rachel's wearing sunglasses. Hard to tell from our vantage point, but the sun is essentially coming from the tower. You can sort of see shadows. Rachel. Oh, they're coming up on camera. Yes, Rachel is now completed the girder. They're both resting. 
Ava will have to start first if they both use their maximum rest time. But of course, if Ava beats this and the Heavenly Ascent, she's got the win in the bag, and Rachel, that strategy will not pay off. She essentially has to bank on Ava filling one okay, of these next got, two uh, you got and Rachel then once Ava starts moving. beating them herself. You got Rachel or, once at the very moving. least, being able Ava, to catch her. Go. That's you, go! Okay, she's now going. The judges are gonna give her a little bit of a grace. It's, uh, it can be sometimes mm -hmm. confusing because both uh, rest warnings are the same for both competitors, tonally. She's getting a little bit hung up, reaches out for that birdhouse that is a little bit lithier than the cliff. Rachel's going to have to get this jump. Rachel's prepping to start herself. Well, now we're going to find out she's going to have to beat it, and she makes that last jump, has to get to the rope. Can she grab it? Yes, and now right. she can walk her feet in. So here's the situation. Rachel has to complete the course and has to complete it before Ava. Ava doesn't necessarily have to complete the course if Rachel fails. But Rachel's made it further than she did in the closed qualifier. It's just that jump remaining. This is a personal best for her, but she's looks like she's starting to struggle a little Will bit. Will that rest pay off? She's got yeah. it. Yeah. No! Had it for a second and then lost it. Ava climbing for the win to celebrate with her trophy. Ava Colasanti, your gauntlet champion, and going for the exclamation point. At this point, there is no pressure left to finish because she is already our champion, but she is doing it for pride. She is doing it for glory. She's doing it for that beautiful trophy at the top of the tower. And not only that, but the cheering fans encouraging her to continue. She is inching closer and closer. The tough part of this obstacle is that the further along you go, the more vertical your climb gets. And no. Oh, she ran out of gas, but essentially a victory lap. Ava Colasanti, your first ever Gauntlet Pro Obstacle Challenge. Congratulations, Ava. A heck of a race. She went essentially the distance, making it all the way to Heavenly Ascent in both of her runs. Yeah, it was a very toughly earned battle. Both rounds, her opponents forced her to complete the monstro climb, and she was able to do it both times. Couldn't complete Heavenly Ascent, but at the end, it didn't matter. Her opponents were unable to match her progress, and she is our first female champion. Let's send it back up to the tower where Greg Schwartz is about to present the first ever gauntlet trophy to Ava Colasanti. And in first place, your gold medal winner and champion of the gauntlet, Ava Colasanti! And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Ava Colasanti, our very first gauntlet champion. What a tournament this was. It certainly was. For William Marchese, I'm Alex Cunningham, and we're looking forward to seeing you next time on the Gauntlet Pro Obstacle Challenge.